So because of this, I want to show you some pathological findings which you have to think about when you see a patient in an emergency situation, for example, with dyspnea. In this case, we have a, an apical view of the heart. We do see a four-chamber view. This is the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the right atrium, and the left atrium. And it's quite striking that here is a whole lot of free fluid. That's a so-called swinging heart. In this case, it was a tamponade. The patient was hemodynamically unstable. We do see that the right atrium, the right atrial walls, they are compressed and also, and partly also the free wall of the right ventricle is also not possible to fully dilate during diastole. So per definition in echocardiography, that defines tamponade. Overall, in this case, it was a very young patient with an oncological diagnosis. If you see a swinging heart and a dilated inferior vena cava, that is definitely a pericardial effusion, which is hemodynamically relevant. We can also utilize a pulse drift Doppler measurement. We place the pulse drift Doppler at the tips of the mitral valve and we take a look at the mitral valve inflow. And we do see that there's a certain curve. If this is above 25% of a drop, it's also resembling a so-called pulsus paradoxus. This also shows that the pericardial effusion is hemodynamically relevant. So tampon it. Be aware when you look at the swinging heart that when you place the pulse wave Doppler in the region of the mitral valve, sometimes you might lose the optimal position. So it's still a sign which has to be interpreted with caution. Moving on to a subcoastal view. The subcoastal for chamber view is the view to evaluate pericardial effusion and tamponade. And in this case, we do see a probably overall moderately to a large sized pericardial effusion. We do see that the right ventricle in this view definitely cannot fully dilate during diastole. So this is with echocardiography a tamponade. Also take a look at the interventricular septum, there's this bouncing motion that's so-called interventricular dependence because there's so much fluid around the heart, it compresses the entire heart and when the right ventricle is filling, it tries to compress the left ventricle because there's simply not enough space in the pericardial space because it's filled with free fluid. So this patient of course needs emergency treatment with pericardiosynthesis. What are the normal values of the right ventricle? Well, the dimension is normal when it's the basal diameter below or 41 millimeters. The basal diameter is a quite an easy measurement and easy to reproduce. The function is normal when the tapsy, we already saw an example of a measurement of a tapsy when it is above or 17 millimeters. The S prime, that's the tissue Doppler measurement on the lateral tricuspid annulus. That's normal if it is above or 9.5 centimeters per second. So for practical reasons, maybe it's optimal to remember 10 centimeters per second. And the free wall strain, so the right ventricular free wall strain, is normal when the value is more negative than 23. So for example, minus 24, minus 25. And if we have a problem, a dilated right ventricle or an, a right ventricle which has an impaired right ventricular function, we need to identify possible causes.